He says it was subtle, but it was racism nonetheless. Not once, twice. In one day. And this has been, it's been a long time since I found myself in a position where I really had to ask myself, was I being discriminated against? Because the thing about being black is you, it's tricky because you don't want to be the person that accuses someone of racism if they don't mean to be racist. Sometimes it's blunt and it's right in your face and you know exactly what you're dealing with. But other times it, 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 it might genuinely just be ignorance and they just really didn't think about exactly what they were saying. So you don't really know when you should say something, when you should stand up for yourself and when you should just let it go. And because it hasn't happened to me in so long, it caught me off guard. And the, the first time it That's happened... That's promising to hear that it hasn't happened in a while. It's been a while. It's, it's been a while. Like I re, it, There was a time in my life when you'd probably experience uh, something like that maybe once a week. Mm-hmm. And, and it was, it's like you got to ask yourself, like, what, was that what I thought it was or was it not? And nine times out of ten, if you do bring it to the person's attention, they, they're never going to say, I said what I said and I meant it. They're usually going to, oh, I didn't mean it that way and downplay it. And then it becomes one of those, like, we're not going to go anywhere with this, so you, you just got to let it go. But as I get older, I think if it were to happen to me now, it wouldn't be like it was before where I would probably just let it go. Like, today I would, I would stand up for myself and I would say something. And in the second instance that I experienced, I said something. The first one, I wasn't sure. Like, this is a perfect example of how you just really don't know. In this moment, I don't think she meant it the way it came off. But it was just so confusing to me because I didn't understand why she would say that to me. And so... Is this a person you know or no, is this a new person? Okay. I was on a flight. All right. And, and this is an attendant. And she was, she was nice the entire flight. So I had no reason to think that she would be racist or anything like that. And I was, not for nothing, I was up there with the big dog. So we getting like great service. It's a whole different kind of service up there. And then as, as the flight was coming to an end, I saw her like walking around and handing out candy. And she only said this to me for some reason. Like, she was handing out candy, and she was just like, you know, here, here you go. Hope you enjoyed the flight. And then she comes to me, and she's like, would you like some candy, little boy? Oh. Uh, little, excuse me? Yeah, because you don't, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, it, like, it shook me. Now, I was like, now, for some listening, they may not know why that's offensive. So, you, <laughs> it's a shame you have to explain it, but right. you, you want to go for it? Well, yeah, calling a black man a, a boy in, in any form as, uh, as a white person, you, you don't know how to take that because that's, well, it's offensive. I'm a man. I'm not a boy. And a lot of times that terminology is used to degrade you. And it kind of felt like it might have been that, like almost as if, may, I don't want to say it was jealousy, but some form of you're not even, you're not happy with the fact that I'm up here and that you have to serve me. And so maybe that was your way of dealing with that anxiety, that that unhappiness of having to serve me is by referring to me as a little boy. Or was she trying to be, and I'm not trying to like defend her by any means, because yeah, using the terminology boy can be very, very disrespectful, but because you are so tall and maybe she was trying to crack a joke, like, you want a piece of candy, little boy? She but, might have been. This is so interesting to me that you brought that up because that was my initial reaction too, right? But I think as white people, you never want to, you always want to default to you, that is not racism right there, right? Um, so while you say you don't want to make excuses, I think our reasoning is like, are, you, are we sure that that was a racist thing? Because we don't want to believe that it occurs that subtly. And that's the tricky part. Uh-huh. And, and so I, when I said excuse me to her, she doubled down and said it again and then smiled at me. So at that point, I'm like, okay, I really don't think she knows what she's doing. Maybe mm-hmm. she really is just saying it. So I let it go. And, uh, but it was one of those moments of I wasn't exactly sure how to take that, mm-hmm. but I let it go. So the same day, I get off the flight now and I go to this restaurant and I'm, I'm actually in New York. I'm in my hometown, and I go to this really nice place. And I guess um, when I got to the place, it, I mean, it was nice, but it wasn't, like, so up class that people were wearing suits and things of that nature. It just was a, a nice ambiance. So I had my hat on. I didn't think anything of it. When I get to the door, he's like, you can't wear hats. So I'm like, okay, fine. And I think I'm just at this point in my life where I'm like, if I'm going to come in here and spend all this money, mm-hmm. I'd rather go somewhere where I can be comfortable mm-hmm. and do whatever I want to do. But I took my hat off, no problem. I take the hat off, and then they, they take me to the, this section. And then I, I'm with my friend, and I was like, am, am I bugging? Or there's like almost half the people in here have a hat on. And he starts to look around. 
He's like, oh, no, they, they definitely have hats on. And I, I mean, like, same kind of hat. Like, I had on a Yankee hat, and then there was a white guy that was literally a table over. And he had on a Dodgers hat. That's the other thing that pissed me off. Like, we're in New York. Right? <laughs> so if anybody should have had to take their hat off, it should have been him. Amen. Right? So I see him with the hat on, and I see people at other tables with their hats on. I seen a woman with her hat on. Oh, I'm putting my hat back on. Well, I don't have to take my hat off. I didn't think anything of it. I put it back on. It couldn't have been two minutes. No way. Two minutes. The guy comes back, hey, man, I don't, I don't you know, mean to be rude, get all in your dinner, but you got to take the hat off. So I said, okay, don't worry about it. So I took the hat off, and I just kind of threw it at the, at the couch. And then uh, my friend was like, no, nah, I'm not going for that. Mm-hmm. So I said, give it, give, it, give it a few. Give it like 20 minutes. And if he goes and asks everybody else to do it, we'll let it go. So that's what we did. And I, the, the, the white guy was on a platform, so he was even higher than me. So in my mind, I'm like, it's impossible yeah. for you to have seen me and not have seen him. So why do you have to ask me to take my hat off? So we gave it the time. No one else in this facility was asked to take their hat off. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, that, that's it. I'm going to say something. So when the guy comes back over, I was like, uh, I want to see your manager. So the manager comes over, and I said, uh, I just need an explanation as to why I've been in here 30 minutes now, and I am the only person who has been asked to take my hat off. And he said, no, 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 man, it's not personal. Uh, everybody has to take the hat off. I said, this gentleman still has a hat on. You're going to make me be this person now. She got a hat on. He got a hat on. And he's like, oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. We'll get right on it. I'm not bringing this to your attention for you to go now ask mm-hmm. everybody to take their hats off. That is not the point of this at all. And I'm I, assuming every single person who had a hat on was white. Of course. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it, it was so obvious mm-hmm. that this is what was happening. But he was, he was being aggressive and trying to defend He's like, I would never do that. And I said, maybe you wouldn't. But that doesn't mean that your employees Mm -hmm. wouldn't because I've sat here for 25 minutes and watched this man wear his hat comfortably three feet from me. And no one has said anything. But you've asked me twice. I couldn't even get my appetizer before you asked me twice to take my hat off. And then his his thing was, well, you know, I'll just I'll comp the meal. How does that work? I'm like, dude, this is not about money. It's not about that at all. It's, it's just it's simply about training your staff to not be discriminatory. So he wasn't the one. No reason. Was he the one who had told you to take off your hat, no. the manager? But it was OK. Right. So yeah. that's why his point was, I would never do that. OK. Let me comp the mill. And now it all should go away. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that, that's not the point of this conversation. You've got to you educate to- your staff. Exactly. And like if, if it's fine to have rules, but keep the same energy. Our money spend the same. So why didn't you ask him to take his hat off? You only asked me. And then it became, he, you know, it, it was a miss. It was a mistake. He probably missed it. Uh, it's, just, it, it's way too ironic that he caught me twice and this guy's sitting right here. So in a moment like that, because you have two options here, you can take accountability, you can apologize, you can promise to do better, you can educate your employees on discrimination and equality, or you can do what he did. Exactly that. And, I, and that's what I wanted from him was an apology. Uh-huh. And then, you know, just keep, like I said, keep the same energy. When people come in here, you spend all our money the same, so have the same energy for everybody. I'm not asking you to go and ask everybody else to take their hats off now. I'm not even asking for you to comp this meal because I didn't like the fact that he tried to make it seem like I was trying to get a free meal out of something. Sure. I, that's, that's not what this is about. Because you can't be bought. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I'm not exactly sure how to communicate this, uh, and I hope I do it in a way that's not offensive. Um, it's just, it's such a, it, it, it's, it dawns on me that you have to notice things entering any room that I never even have to think about. I no. never even think about anything like that. I enter a room, and if, if it's a hat situation, I, my default is not racism. It's not the color of my skin. But that's on your mental plate with every room you have to walk into and every situation you have to walk into. Every single one. Damn. And that's the point of this conversation is you, you go through that at work, you go through that at school, you go through that, I mean, just anywhere in life, restaurants, lounges, you know, places they, they won't let you in because of your T-shirt, but you look inside and you see a lot of similar T-shirts in there, but you can't get in. It's it's those little subtle things at times that you, you're really not sure exactly what you're dealing with, but more times than not, you know where it's coming from. The Burt Show. Like what you just watched? Well, you can get way more of The Burt Show on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts.